Sometimes the conversion from the poser material to a reality one doesn't go exactly the way we desired. And that is one of the reasons why we have a fully featured material editor in reality. The other reason is that many times we have no information about what the original material was supposed to do. So, for example, in Poser, uh, there is no definition of a glass material. All materials are generic. So, when an artist wants to define a glass material in Poser, we'll just create a generic material, and uh, the material will be given a transparency of some kind, either a transparency map or just straight a constant value. Now, that is not really how glass is defined in the real world, but Poser doesn't have physics-based materials. Uh, Lux Render does, and reality is able, is designed to uh, convert the materials from one type to the other. Now, when the material is first converted from Poser, reality doesn't know that that material was supposed to be glass. The only thing they can find is a transparency level. But that is not enough to provide the hint about the type of material. So, the material editor in reality is designed to allow us to change a material from the generic type of glossy to anything we want. So if we want to change this to be of type glass, we can do it easily. And that is the other reason why reality has a fully featured material editor, which is, in many regards, as powerful as something like the node system in Poser, but simpler. But it's a completely different system, and it's based on a few different principles, and we are going to take advantage of those principles and those designs uh, in this demonstration. What I'm going to try to show you is an interesting case. Here we have a texture uh, of, from a package called Sunmi, I think. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, anyway, you can see the name right here, and it is a texture package, a skin for Victoria 4 that is available at Renderosity. Uh, one of my customers brought up this issue because the skin didn't come through correctly, which was interesting because generally skin materials uh, are converted very uh, well in reality, but this one is a, a very specific material. Let me show you how it's defined. If we go into the material room and we click on the skin, now we can see that there are a lot of nodes in this material. This is a very, very complex material with a complex operations, selections of the X component, Y component, Z component, all these things, and uh, strangely enough, the material doesn't have a specular map, which would have benefited a lot, but that's a completely different story. Um, we're going to focus on the conversion. Now, if we look at the conversion of this material, in reality, it's not so good. See the preview uh, of the skin? It's really not what we want, unless we were going to define something alien or uh, some other type of uh, non-human creature. So, uh, what's happening here? Well, if we look back at the original material, we can see um, that if we look in the diffuse color here, we end up with a subtract node. And subtraction is something that reality supports, but it's quite odd that this operation is done at this point here. But I'm not criticizing, just it's a, it's a little unusual. So what the reality does is to you know find this node and find say, this subtraction and then tries to find what's attached to the node. You know following these uh, two noodles, you know the orange and blue one. But you know there are a bunch of nodes that are attached to this that really don't make much sense 
when converted to lux. And so we end up with a conversion that is really not meaningful. So let's examine it. The point here is, do we really need to understand this? Not quite. It's, we don't have to become geniuses in, in uh, solving the puzzle. Not at all. There is a very simple solution, and that's why I'm here showing it to you. Uh, but we start with the skin phase, and we look at the diffuse channel. The diffuse channel is what gives the color to a material. Okay, So we don't care about the specular and all the other stuff for now. We want to solve this problem. So I'm clicking on this texture. This is a subtract Fresnel texture, which is inside the diffuse channel. So when I click, the texture is loaded in the texture editor. Now, for the sake of clarity, a texture is not an image. I know the imposer often those two terms are uh, equated, but a texture is a pattern that is projected on a surface. That is the technically correct definition of a texture. A texture is a pattern that is projected on a geometric surface. So we click on this texture and it's loaded in the texture editor. And here we see that it is called Subtract Fresnel and it's of type Color Math. It's a texture that uh, performs mathematical operations on two textures, texture A and texture B. In this case, we see that texture B is subtracted from texture A. Do we need to understand what that means? No. Subtraction, when it comes to a skin, is something that is very rare. Unless I want to create a, an alien race or a monster skin, uh, generally you, we will not see this. So why is it possible? For example, we could use subtraction to subtract red from a skin. That will basically leave us with just the green and blue component, which can be interesting for a nailing race. Okay. But in this case, we want a human. Um, so subtraction is immediately giving us a hint that something is not quite correct. But for now, we're going to ignore it. So I'm going to concentrate here. I'm going to focus on the uh, combined ramp and texture texture which is of type color math. Now, if I click on this texture, then the texture editor will open that texture. Now, take a look here in this area called the breadcrumbs. We are now in the diffuse portion of the texture. So this is the diffuse channel. So we are at the first level of the diffuse channel. If I click on this, now we are in diffuse texture A. Now this is the combined ramp and texture, and again it's of type color math. And this time we are adding something. We don't care. Because I can see that again in texture A there is another color math texture. This is you know, part of the complexity of the model. So I'm clicking on this again. And again take a look at diffuse texture A. And again, we can diffuse texture A, texture A. It means that we are basically two levels down looking at the top texture. And finally, I can find the image map. So this is the image of the face. And this is exactly what I want. So I like to use this instead of all this complexity we have here. How do we do that? Well, let's go up one level. I'll click on this button. And here, basically, I like to say, look, I really don't care about this portion here, and I don't care about anything else. I want to just use this image map. So basically, this whole texture here called the combined spots and texture, I want to convert this from being a color map texture to being a image map texture. And then I would like to use this image that is here. Well, we are in luck because reality does that automatically. So when I convert from one texture to another, reality tries to convert and preserve 
the relevant information. Now, in this case, there is a decision to be made. Since we have a, two textures available, if I convert from color math to an image map, reality has to pick one of the two. And it will pick always texture A. That's the way it is designed. So looking at texture A, reality will then try to find something that can be used, which we have. So let's see how it works. Remember, we are in diffuse, texture A, texture A, combine spots and texture. OK, I click on an image map. And now combine spots and texture is of type image map with that image loaded. We simplified one step. Perfect. Let's go up one level. We don't have the subtract or addition anymore. We just have an image map. Exactly what we wanted. We don't have to search for files around the, the disk. We just did a conversion, one click of the mouse. So we go up one more level. And again, we have combined ramping texture. Here we have color math. Now we see that the image, the material preview has changed. Now, this is not good yet, but it is better than before. So there is a sign here that we are on the right path. Again, I don't care about this portion here. I just want to preserve this. I click on color math, on the texture type, actually. Select image map. And again, I simplify this texture. Perfect. Now I go up one level, and we are at the first step here. Now we can click on the diffuse channel here again to confirm it's the same, nothing happened, it's exactly the same texture. And here we have basically this texture minus this color here. I could just select none and be done with it. And you see the effect. The texture is presenting itself correctly. What it means is that basically we just have this image map mixed with this color, which is basically leaving the image map unaltered, completely unchanged. And then there is no other function to be performed. So basically, we are left with just this image. We can simplify it. There's no reason to keep all this other garbage on the screen. Let's go to image map. And we are done. Now, if I click on this texture, this is what I get. So I simplified multiple levels of mathematical operations that we do need and obtain just the pure image map. I didn't have to hunt for the file. I didn't have to create anything different. I didn't have to uh, do anything complicated. Just converted one type to the other and let reality do its magic because it knows where to find the relevant information. So the only thing that we need to do is to repeat the process for the other parts of the scene. For example, we will need to change the lips as well. Because if we look at lips now, they are rather black. And it's exactly the same thing. This is not of the, this texture is of type glossy, not skin, but it is designed in the same way. So just for the sake of uh, getting familiar with the process, I'm going to repeat it here so you can see the process in action again. So we have clicked on the diffuse channel, which loads the texture here. Look at the breadcrumbs here, diffuse. And this is of type color math. So I'm going to drill down. I'm going to click on texture A, which opens up the texture uh, in the editor, showing that we have an addition. I'm going to drill down again, because texture A is of type color math. We see that there is an image, but this is a color math texture, again, complex. And here I have finally my image map. OK, so exactly the same map. I simplified this, 
converting it to image map, which will basically preserve this image map and discard this portion. So image map. Then I go up one level. And now we see that my texture of type image map is here, but it is added with another texture that I don't need. So I'm going to simplify this. Perfect. And then I go up one level. And again, I'm facing the same situation. So I'm going to change this to image map. And now I have the right type of texture. We are in the first level of the diffuse channel. So I know that I don't need to do anything else. I don't have any other levels. I click on the refresh preview. And here we are. So now at this point, I can just change the parameters. You know, I can make this a little more shiny, which will give me a nice highlight on the lips. In the same fashion, I can go to the skin face material that we changed before and uh, increase the glossiness. And the other thing is I want to check my hair mask here because this texture needs to be completely white, as white as possible, except for the eyebrows. So the, the purpose of this texture is to basically just mask the eyebrows so that those don't become washed out by the subsurface scattering effect. And um, the way I do this, the way I reach that goal is by acting on the gain. Now, right now, reality has done um, an estimation, it's just basically a guess of uh, what we should do. This is all good, but I will need to basically uh, increase this. And I change the gain, I see that I'm losing detail in the face, which is what I need. And um, the eyebrows are still marked in black. So this is good. I can maybe go to 155. That can be used. We still have enough detail on the eyebrows. This is a good hair mask. And now the result is, now the material is correct. I hope that this tutorial has helped you understand more how to convert and manage the materials in reality. My name is Paolo Ciccone for Preta 3D. Thank you for watching.